Hey guys, here is a new radiant charger that I made. This is a brand new circuit and I wanted to show you guys the results on a motorcycle battery. So I'll show you real quick what the uh, voltage is doing. So we're sitting at 17.2 volts. You can see the small spikes of power. And this was a fully charged battery sitting at 13 volts when I started. So it's actually charging a fully charged battery. As the sulfation is removed from the plates, the voltage will actually go down as the internal resistance of the battery gets lower and lower and the cells become cleaner. The voltage spikes will actually get smaller and the voltage will go down. So it starts out really high. It started at 17.26 volts and now we're at 17.2. So we are radiantly charging this battery. When it's fully charged, it will get closer down to around its normal resting voltage, somewhere around 13.5 volts, and then it will hold a higher resting voltage. So this battery is being conditioned right now. So this is the first time this battery has been on a radiant charger. So what I did is I made a circuit that was actually a big improvement over the last radiant charger circuit. This is a circuit that what it does is it actually creates a square wave from a sine wave. It has a portion of the circuit that conditions the sine wave and it's really neat because it creates a very very sharp fast switching and it creates a similar switching as you would get with a 555 timer or some other digital timer but there's no timer so it's a really simple circuit there's not that many parts to it there's actually two transistors and there's a MOSFET and then there's a diode and that's really the main parts and then there's some peripheral parts some resistors and capacitors that you need to make it work and I have a circuit diagram if you go to my website Ritali dot com slash store and I'll show the link down in the description what's interesting about this charger and the reason I made it I re really was thinking of um, people that email me and they want information about radiant chargers and what I did is I used off-the-shelf parts and what's so cool about this charger is this uses a basic HVAC transformer and that's a transformer that you can buy on eBay. If you get a 120 to 240 transformer that puts out 24 volts on the secondary, basically that gives you a center tap and you use the uh, 120 to 240 side of the transformer and that gives you a center tap and use the center tap to give you a trigger coil winding and then with the trigger coil winding that allows you to make a radiant charger that self oscillates and it self oscillates by having that center tap winding on the transformer and then you use these parts here and you create a radiant charger what's really neat about the circuit I made is that it's extremely efficient and because it's so efficient it doesn't get hot at all the circuit runs just above ambient temperature and it's using 1.5 amps with a 12 volt power supply which is coming in the back here and I'll show you what that looks like if you can see it. So you can build this charger yourself and I will give you all the plans. And again, if you just go to my website, retali.com. And what's really cool about this charger is it doesn't have a timer on it. I know a lot of people don't like complex uh, digital electronics. This is just the most basic parts that you can get. Um, transistors, MOSFETs, and the big transistor on the back is actually a very high voltage um, protected transistor designed for automotive ignitions and it actually has internal protection which prevents it from burning out. So I designed this circuit specifically so you could run it for a very long time and not have any failures and even if for some reason you unhook the battery while it's running and you have just unlimited flyback voltage coming out of the uh, transformer which is on the back basically normally a circuit will burn up because of all the voltage 
this circuit puts out 650 volts but the transistor I used which you can see on the large heatsink that transistor actually is limited at 450 volts and it has internal protection on the base and the collector so basically it has two internal protection safeties built in it and even if you were to run this circuit with open wires and run the circuit open and you don't have anything on the output the transistor will not burn up and the idea was if you build this it's going to be very reliable so I tried to think of the best way to make a reliable circuit and I used an automotive grade automotive ignition transistor for the main output transistor and that will be in my circuit diagram I'll give you exact values and you can replicate this circuit exactly the way I did I've put a lossless diode on the output which it has zero recovery time so it's one of the fastest new diodes that they make on the market and that handles the output um, going to the batteries yeah so check out my website uh, retali.com and then go to slash store so retali.com slash store and it's spelled r-i-t-a-l-i-e and then just put a slash and then type the word store and you'll see the plans for this radiant charger and check out my channel I've got other videos I've made other radiant chargers this is the latest one and I was really excited to show you guys thanks a lot